MIT did a study that showed that they used blue light flashing at 40 hertz frequency and were able to increase gamma in rats. So that's really good. We have a lot of rats with high gamma, right? But that's the way they, that's the way they do. So we thought, well, we've never recorded our gamma. We proved that by doing a brain tap session in our study, our new burn study, where we took 60 people and studied them for 30 days, that we improved gamma by 9%. Not by doing gamma sessions. There's a harmonics that happens in the brain. When your brain crosses through the alpha barrier, 10 hertz frequency, the brain creates a harmonics, like a tuning fork. You ever use a tuning fork? You have another tuning fork? Those two will start another tuning fork, right? If you put a third one in the room, that's what happens to the brain. So when you're going through the different frequencies with the brain tap, it creates a harmonics. The brain starts to again balance, communicate, because the brain works with light, sound, and vibration, just like every other cell of your body. And what does that light, sound, and vibration need? It needs nutrients, you know, blood flow, circulation, nutrition. And the light brings in the nitric oxide, which we're not talking about right now, but there's a lot of magic that happens when you introduce light to the brain. The brain needs that. The most under the most underprescribed nutrient on earth is light. If we get it to the brain, the brain will know how to use it. If it doesn't need it, it passes it on to the body. But the brain will get it first. So almost 90% of the people that we test, I know in India, over 90% of the people were functioning in delta. Like over 70% of their brain was in delta while they were awake. So what it's telling us is they have a lot of inflammation, a lot of stress. You know, and we find that a lot when people are staying in hotels, you know, eating foods they don't like, you know, the brain's tired, especially if we scan, if we scan somebody right now rather than scan them in the morning, it's going to be different. You know, it's not that, if we were to really do this in the clinic, we'd probably want you to do a fast coming in the morning, <laughs> then we could do it all. But we just want to know, is there any shift when somebody gets on the brain tap? So the perfect brain wave, by the way, is very little to no delta, a little bit of theta, anywhere between 40 to uh, 35 to 40% alpha, and 55% uh, beta and 6% uh, gamma. Well, we find those after the sessions, most people have a spike in gamma. Like we'll have people that will go up to 23% gamma after a brain tap session. And we did not do any gamma training. That's that harmonics I'm talking about. Now, what does gamma do? Gamma, if we were, what they know is studying people with, with gamma brainwave activity. That's where the, those, when you see those pictures on, uh, or you see the movies or the shows where they show the monks meditating in the in the they're in the snow and they're melting the snow around them and they put ice blankets over them. They're in high bait, they're in high gamma. They're not in deep theta. Their brain's operating at this higher level and they're actually changing their atmosphere around them with gamma. If somebody's a healer, they've done studies with people who have this this healing capacity in their hands. As soon as they start generating heat in their hands, they have high gamma. They don't know how they do it, but that's what's happening. So they also know that highly creative thinkers, people who are, have all this inspiration, and all this heightened creativity, they have high gamma. So it's, it's kind of to be like a high level of theta. You know, the theta we tend to be relaxed, that's for rejuvenation, rebuilding, and healing the body, where gamma seems to be an awake state where you can have this insight and uh, have this creativity.